Oh, been, where was that she, shorty ball? She's, she's, been, ball she's been listening to it. Oh. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it sure. was that shorty ball. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's like a donut. <laughs> And sometimes they're salty. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they Listen, they're fuzzy. It's been a long time. Sometimes they're fuzzy. <laughs> Do you want some? Yeah. Go, 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 she go, was go, just go, talking go, about go. she's drinking her boba. Boba. She's like I'm slurping on my balls with your little those little. Yeah, and sometimes they have like juice inside of them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do have the popping balls. Um, the juicy popping sweaty balls. I made my, I got my dad one when I saw him this past weekend. And he's like, what the fuck is that this? one popped in my mouth. He was like really thrown <laughs> off by it. And he didn't want one. And then he drink, ended up drinking my whole entire like drink and i was like i thought you didn't want boba oh my and then God. he called me a couple days later and he was like what was that stuff called with the balls <laughs> with the like, balls boba <laughs> boba <laughs> so boba boba Na bola. <laughs> Not the first bonita. time I had it was in New Mexico. I was like, what the hell are these things? Popping nope. in my mouth. Get, why are they in my drink? They, you slurp them up in your straw and they hit you in the back of the throat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's deeper don't than choke on them. Yeah, the you, know, you know it. You know it. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. We're so gross. So I was... Uh, texting Carlene the other day asking her if she was watching that crime scene um cecil hotel oh yeah. i stopped what i was doing and i put that shit on though <laughs> she's like where is it yeah and then i yeah. was like i had to cut myself off so i'd go to bed right how far did you get i think i'm on the third i have an unhealthy personality that i have to finish these things like once i start it and i know there's another episode i have to watch is it like thing. a series yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 okay wait i'm like the i'm Night where they one? They find her in the tanks. Okay. I don't That's know what I'm at. Okay. Yeah. And they show her. <gasps> yeah. Is that actually her? No. Oh, I think okay. it's all reenactment. It's all reenactment. But it, so. all of it gave me the chills. Yeah. It's so bad. So sad. Yeah. It's so about weird. Elisa Lamb. And we did a story on the Cecil Hotel. Like, did you listen to that one? We did it a while back. I don't think so. Not yet. Well, not we did it on one. her. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'm telling you, somebody was outside. Oh, that theory of them... Can we speak of it? Okay, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. (laughs) I'm going to be the, I'm going to be Eva tonight. Uh, Don't you have any? We should just, yeah, because we're. Well, let's start. Hello, I'm Alma. I'm, I'm Eva tonight. (laughs) I'm Car, AKA Carlene. (laughs) And we're being joined by. Hello. Bianca. Hello. Hello. Say it again. Did I say that? I'm Bianca. Hello. (laughs) We drowned you out. Yeah, Bianca's joining us again. We're drinking we a had... strong wine. Yes, we're drinking 19 Cribes. Cribes? Cribes. Oh, Cribes. It's already yeah, hitting we've, us. We've already been drinking. 19 Cribes, the uprising. It's called uh, Age 30 Days in Rum Barrels. That's what it's called? Um, The uprising. The uprising. And the, the rest guy... of this writing is so tiny. Yeah. The guy is, um, he speak. he's like from Ireland and his story is like, I don't know. It's, but anyway, this bottle was gifted to us by Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. I told her we'd be probably the more we drink, the more we thank her. And your story is going to be based on this. It was inspired well, by this one. Inspired by the fact that it's an, an Irish, I, I would have done the crime part and picked like something that had to do on him. Right. But instead, I just did the Irish theme. It was inspired by this in honor of the Irish criminal. Right. But it's it's a it's a castle. I, I can't wait. I Spooky hear it. as shit. Is it in, hmm? in back in the day? Yeah. Okay. 18. Mm-hmm. And, like and even now. Yeah. It's it's, ooh, it's a good one. You know, I like those back in the day stories. Mm-hmm. Although. We got I, fairies. I just started, huh? Fairies? There's mm-hmm. fairies in your story? Yes. Oh, right. I'm all about it. Oh. I started watching, mm-hmm. me and Albert started watching uh, Mindhunters. Did mm-hmm. you ever watch that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you watch the first season or have you watched both of them? Uh, I haven't finished the first season, but okay. I'm pretty, I don't know how far I am because I quit watching it after a while. Did you? I get, I have to give myself breaks on certain yeah. shows. It's like serial killers and it really gets like, <sighs> it gets kind of dark. Yeah. Have you watched it? Mindhunters? I love that one. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. when it came out last year, me and Albert were already into it different shows or whatever so 
I just kept putting it off and putting it off and we never watched it. I started watching the second season the other day and Albert's like, what are you watching? I'm like, Mindhunters, you remember, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, he's like, I don't remember. I was like, no, we watched it together. He's like, I don't remember that show. So we've been re-watching the whole first season. Oh. So we just barely got to the second season. And it's pretty good so far. Anyways, the reason I bring it up is a bunch of the serial killers that they showcase. Mm-hmm. I really want to do this year. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. BTK being one of the main ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, And then there was one. Hmm. Oh, God, what was this? His William Jr. Pierce. Which one was that? The big guy? No, no, this is the second season. Oh, okay. So, spoiler alert to anybody, but this guy was dumb as a box of fucking rocks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And did you, have you seen it? I'm pretty sure. He was just so stupid, but he thought he was a genius. Mm Mm-hmm. And they were just, it was an interview with him, whatever. So I was like, who is this guy? I've never heard of him. So I started looking him up. I had already had this other story, like Mm -hmm. in the back of my mind, like I want to do this story. I wanted, but then I heard him and I was like, so I went back and forth like this whole week. I was like, no, I'm going to stick with this story. It's hard because I know I'll get almost, I was done with this story. And then I was like, oh, but I wanted to do. And then you told me about that other one. Uh, What was the name of it? Because you mentioned it as well, Bianca. The girl? The girls. It, oh, the girls. Yeah. The two little oh, girls. Delphi. That, yeah. The Delphi yeah. martyrs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they haven't found them, so we don't know. Right. Right? No, they found them. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought they haven't found them yet. Yeah. No, they found them right away. Because I thought it was still... No, at first they were missing, but they found them. So we talked about that, and I was like, so I started looking into that. I was like, maybe I'll do that. So it's been one of these weeks where I've just been kind of like going back and forth. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. one just came across while I was actually doing this. And I'm like, what is that? And I click, oh, those girls. But I didn't finish. And then that time. virtual link that you sent me? Yeah. I sent it to her. Did you? Yeah. I forwarded that it. That looks really cool. Oh, is that I the didn't one download that, it oh. yet. Oh, you haven't? No, I haven't either. No, I didn't download it. I was like curious, but then, I don't know. I didn't. But I've been watching I'm a Killer on yeah. Netflix. That's I a good one. That one but I That's haven't, so I haven't good. It. That one's really interesting. So good. Yeah. Who's it? Who's the? I don't know. You can't. T- I watched it a while ago. They they have they just have like every episode is a different person. Oh, okay. And they're not necessarily like known murderers, mm-hmm. you know. Like they're just telling their story, you know, and like where like how they grew up, and then like the first they talk one about was their case. Yeah, who was that first one? It was the guy that people think he's. They, he was framed or something. No, I'm going to Google it. Oh, yeah, because that's going to drive me crazy. I think he has blonde hair. I'm trying to think if I got This that one part. says I it was so. James Robertson. Let me see. This guy? Ah, oh, hold on. Let it... Oh, okay. no, no, no. Uh, he looks like, he looks like, uh, not Lurch, but the uncle. <laughs> he does. Oh, <laughs> Fester. Like Fester. Fester. <laughs> he looks like Uncle Fester. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a really interesting show because, like I said, they're not necessarily, like, like murderers we've heard on news and, like, seen. It's just, like, these small town murderer, you know, people that have killed people. And there are, um, I think majority of them are, like, on death row. Um, but they kind of just go into, like, their history of their life and then, um, and then into the story of how they killed this person. And, and then, like, sometimes the cops that were in the case come on mm-hmm. and then like the prosecutors will come on and talk about it and um it's just it's a really interesting show you know so i've been watching that one recently so i have to put it on my list on my list my list is getting bigger that netflix I know, I has a, a lot now. of good stuff right now yeah i feel like yeah <laughs> i'm already feeling it <laughs> well you said to, it was like slow down you know, so I, I can enunciate because i go she looked yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay she so that kinda... last episode that we did together that I was checked terrible out. that was terrible you, you, when i listened which to that back oh you oh my god oh. we were cracking up because i'm like okay now you're you're slurring your words i'm, but... I'm like Eurasis. i'm like okay i almost feeling it like, yeah I was... alma is definitely about today yeah at the worst possible time when we're uh-huh. doing that story that was so hilarious it was a heavy story i though. know I know. It was. Anyway, so on the last episode, and I know you haven't gotten to that episode yet, um, we discussed the civil rights workers that were killed in Mississippi in the summer of 1964. And in the midst of like the research on that, I found that there had been eight other bodies that had been dredged out of the swamp or found in the forest or in the woods. So anyways, I wanted to look at the ones that they had like positively identified more in depth. 
and kind of talk about that one. And so that's what my story is going to be. About. I would like it if you looked at me a little bit I'm too. Sorry, I'm, I'm like just... in a weird. <laughs> I'm in a weird. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We'll just have to look at each other through this. I'm here too. She's like, you know, I'm in the room. Yeah, I guess I Hello. don't exist. Hello. Hello. Well, no. Here's just a, look at. We'll look at each other challenge. through that. Here's my challenge to be heard on my microphone here. Yeah. And so when I turn around to look at you, you don't want to go like this. Yeah. But, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> like a cat. <laughs> okay, and uh, go. No, you can. We can look at each other through there. That way, we can okay. look at her. All at, right. So that's what her. I'll do. I'll look at you, and then I'll look at her, yeah. and then I'll look at you. All right. No, so you, you just, won't feel left out. I mean. <laughs> And the thing is that we're also filming this, and you guys won't be able to see Bianca unless I figure they out. They won't later. understand. Yeah. <sighs> like, what, we can what see Bianca. Bianca. <laughs> they it would be nice this. if we could put her in, like, a little that? box. What the hell is that? <laughs> it's my dog. Oh. <laughs> she, she likes to sleep <laughs> right in my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. My, like, what my pussy heck? sleeps there, too. <laughs> my pussy it's cat nice and warm. here we go here we go uh, my cat your cat <laughs> just in I case did, anybody I, you know petting my black pussy <laughs> <laughs> she's a black cat dirty mind uh, okay okay all right all right hey is there anything else we want to discuss my before we is, jump my, into it? My back is super itchy. Do you want me to scratch it? I'm no, scratch it's really sweaty, too. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. And so we can begin. Take a deep breath. And here's my story. My story is about the murders of Charles Moore and Henry D. So I'm going to get on my soapbox Really quick here. Go. Get up there. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to look in the mirror and acknowledge the deep, dark truths about ourselves. As a nation, we are relatively young compared to others, so you might even say we're still experiencing our growing pains. Oh, hey, do you know that Sunday will be Arizona's birthday? Yeah, I didn't remember that until you said it. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember it. it's the 14th. Yeah, I can't remember how old we are, but we're old. Do you remember I'm how old look we it are, up. Bianca? Because you were reminding us earlier. <laughs> um, let me see. You were born in uh, something with the S. How old I is think. Arizona? Yeah. <laughs> something with an S. Thank you. 108. So I think, are we going to be 109? That's Arizona, not us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, I'm not even listening to you two because I'm, I'm older. I'm choking my balls over here. I'm older than all of you. I'm older than all of you. Not by much. So anyways, we spoke during our last episode about the murders of the three civil rights workers in Philadelphia, Mississippi, during the summer of 1964. Andrew Goodman, James Cheney, and Michael Schwerner at the hands of the KKK. So it's technically still Black History Month, so I, I'm, I just wanted to do this story as well. I find it strange that some people that love true crime will talk all day about murder and serial killers and rape, but get all squirmy when you bring up stories like these. Maybe because there is a political component to this. And if you feel one way or another about these crimes, you have to put yourself in one box or the other, which you don't. That's stupid. I mean, it As make, a nation. if it makes you uncomfortable, then it's something you need to look at. Yeah. And there is, we talked about this last time. It is very, there's a right and a wrong in this. There is no middle. It's not political. It's moral. <laughs> yes. That's, that's what we were talking about yeah. the last time. So. Mm -hmm. If it makes you squirm, why does it make you squirm? Yeah. All right. Anyways, we discussed that while they were searching for the bodies of Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner, they also found the remains of eight more people, and two of them were positively identified as Henry D. and Charles Moore, both 19. I can't remember if I mentioned... I know they were so young. 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 I don't remember if I mentioned it or not that there was... 400 sailors that were called in to join the FBI in their search. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So then I probably didn't. No. Um, they mucked through the mud and swamp and woods in South Mississippi in what was probably the most hot and humid time of year. Mm-mm. Can you imagine in the South, it's like so humid and muggy. Um, it was July 12th, 1964, when the brutalized, disarticulated torso of a man was fished out of the river south of Tallulah, Louisiana. It was identified by a draft card he had in his possession Mm -hmm. as Charles Eddie Moore. A day later, on July 13th, another torso was recovered in much the same condition in the same area. This would be identified as Henry Hezekiah D. Like I said, they were both 19. Charles was a college student and Henry was a mill worker, and they were both friends. They had both been hitchhiking on May 2nd, 1964 in Meadville. That would be the last time anyone would see both of them alive. They had been picked up more like kidnapped by James Ford Seal, who thought they were black activists. He took them to the Hamachito. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Hamachito. Mm. It almost sounds like I want to pronounce it in Spanish like Mochito. <laughs> <laughs> I hear my dad coming out. Hamachito Natural For- National Forest. It's probably Indian. Mm. It's probably like yeah. Native American. Um, where he and several others who happened to be members of the White Knights of the Ku Klux. Ku Klux. I want to say Ku Klux Klan every <laughs> single time. Just think of a. Do you ever. What's that band? Oh, shoot. I hear the song. It's very inappropriate. Af- Afro Man. <laughs> I, I never heard it. You never. Oh. Okay. I'll send you some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so the White Knights of the Ku Klux, Ku Klux, oh my God. Do you know what it is? The fact that you're talking about that. Afro man. It just kind of blew my mind for a second. Everybody I'm gets. Like, holy sh- Yeah. Marlene my, knows Afro man? Yeah. All right. My, uh, <laughs> my little, uh, my cousins, I call them my nephews and nieces. But when the first time they, I was singing along to it in their mom's car and they were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I actually introduced my kids to it, so you're welcome. That's so I'm just saying. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you could say I'm the coolest, or you could say I'm the coolest. You're the coolest, Carly. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm not going to try and um, pronounce this anymore. The KKK, the White Knights of the KKK, yeah. tie them to a tree and brutally beat them both with whip-like bean poles and tree limbs. One of the articles that I was reading said that these... Beam poles were like finger, like the circumference of your finger. So they're whipping oh, them with these. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's awful. After they had beaten them both within an inch of their lives, they stuffed them still alive into the trunk of a car and drove them to the Old River in Tallulah, Louisiana. They took them each one at a time on a rowboat, wrapped them in plastic, and tied one to an engine block and the other one to a railroad track. <gasps> what the hell is wrong with people? Yeah. And dumped them unceremoniously into the river. Assholes. Alive. <gasps> so the fact that they found oh, a torso my God. of each of them and didn't find the other parts. I mean, it's the swamps in Louisiana. Mm-mm. Just think what's what's in the swamps, like alligators and whatever. Uh, on November 6, 1964, after an extensive investigation by the FBI, state authorities arrested James Ford Seal and Charles Marcus Edwards for the kidnapping and murder of D. Ed Moore. January 11, 1965, state officials dismissed the criminal charges, of course, because like they did the same thing that they did with the other cases that we were talking about on the last episode. They dismissed the charges against Seal and Edwards on the recommendation of the state district attorney. The motion stated that in the interest of justice and in order to fully develop the facts in this case, the affidavits against James Seal and Charles Edwards should be dismissed by this court without prejudice to the defendants or to the state of Mississippi at this time in order that the investigation may be continued and completed for presentation to a grand jury at some later date, which it was they were just kicking the can down the road. Uh-huh. January fourteenth, nineteen sixty six, the subcommittee of the House Committee on Un American Activities, which was at the time investigating Klan activities, called Seal and nine other alleged Klansmen from the violent white knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Those called Hey, I said it. Yeah. Those called included Seal's father, Clyde Seal, and Charles Marcus Edwards, his alleged accomplice in the D. Moore murders. They would repeatedly plead the fifth, and Chief Investigator Donald T. Apple 
placed on the record what they believed had been done. The case would go cold for many years, almost like 40-something years. Oh, my god! Because prosecutors would deem the case unprosecutable. That is until Thomas Moore, um, Charles Moore's brother, who had been serving in the Vietnam War when his brother was kidnapped. Imagine that. Uh-uh. You're in the war. And I actually was listening. I don't remember if it was the podcast I was listening to or one of the documenta- documentaries that I was listening to on YouTube. Um, he had received a letter. Him and his brother wrote. He had received a letter from his brother and his brother basically said, I'm not going to college anymore than whatever college he was going to. Um, and we'll talk about it when you get home. Uh-huh. So he gets home. I don't know if he was like on leave or if he was actually had already been discharged, but he gets home to find out that his brother's missing. Oh my gosh. So imagine that, like you come back and you just served your mm-hmm. country, except you live in Mississippi and you come down to the deep south where you're like- To find out your shit. brother's been kidnapped and your country doesn't want to help. Mm-hmm. All right. So anyways, in 1998, he started working on the case himself. He asked district attorney- I'm Ronnie. Sorry. 1998. 1998, from 1964. Jesus Christ. Yeah. How disgusting this is. Yeah. So he asks District Attorney Ronnie Harper to look into the murder, and Harper agreed. In the early 2000s, the case would get some momentary light in the media when Newsday 2020 an investigative reporter Jerry Mitchell of the Clarion Ledger of Jackson, Mississippi, would report on it, and then it would go cold again. I think the FBI That's even... That's bullshit. Yeah. Mitchell reported that the murders had occurred on federal land, and this spurred the FBI to take another look at it, but this doesn't seem to go anywhere. It kind of just, like, drizzles out. And I think they were, like, sending stuff to the DA in Mississippi. Like, they were, it was just, like, hot potato. Mm. Because they didn't, they didn't have jurisdiction. The same kind of thing as the jurisdictional stuff that they were running into in the last thing. So they're sending it to the DA in Mississippi, and the DA in Mississippi doesn't want to touch it. Then in 2005... 2005. Yeah. Oh, Filmmaker no. David Ridgen of the CBC, this, he's Canadian, oh. who had run across the case while going through file footage working on a, the Mississippi burning documentary, came across footage of them finding the bodies of Moore and of D. And, and I remember seeing this when I was researching the other stuff, mm-hmm. them fishing out these bodies out of the Mississippi. And so it's all in black and white. And he recalls a narrative voice saying... That it was the wrong body. The finding of a Negro male was noted and forgotten. The search was not for him. The search was for two white youths and their Negro friend. That was basically what the narrative was. So he was just basically saying, hey, we found the wrong body. So and that's kind of the way it was treated because we all know about the three civil rights workers. But we don't know about these. We didn't know about these two guys. So anyways, he gets in contact with Charles' brother Thomas, who had been Charles' brother Thomas, who had... I. I kept getting them mixed up, interchanging Charles and Thomas the Mm -hmm. whole time when I was doing this, who had been living in Colorado, and they embark on a journey to Mississippi to investigate and get the facts for a documentary that Ridgen is putting together. He recorded their trip spanning over 26 months. The documentary is called The Mississippi Cold Case, and I looked for it everywhere to stream it and couldn't find it. I did find it for purchase on Amazon, but it was a DVD. I was like, I don't have anywhere to play a DVD. (laughs) You don't have a DVD player? Oh my gosh. I imagine that's how Netflix started. Right? Oh, I know. I remember (laughs) then like sending them back in the mail. That was frustrating. That's hilarious. But I did run across the podcast. Um, Have you ever heard of this podcast? Somebody Knows Something? Have you ever heard it? It's pretty popular. I don't think so. And I listened to, I think, like the first season, like way back when, and then didn't get back on it. But each season delves into a different um, true crime case. One case per season? Yeah. Wow. So they just, That's it's dedicated. a deep, deep dive into each of these cases. Mm. And it's, they're usually pretty thoughtful and like they play a lot of clips and mm. it's really good. They're mm. really good. I definitely recommend it because it was a thoughtful exploration, not only of the case, but of Thomas's journey from feeling angry and forgotten to getting closure. And even at the end, like, toward, I don't want to give too much away, but at the end of it. That was not an EVP. That was Carlene. <laughs> Are you burpy? Hey, yeah, I'm burpy. <laughs> I'm glad I muted myself because I had a big one earlier. Oh, my oh, God. Before, you should have like... just, you should have just mm-hmm. went for it. And then then gone, did you hear that EVP? Wait, where's Shorty? 
Out there on the couch. I haven't heard her snoring at all. I know. I keep like, nope, that's me breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, like, every episode, at some point, you can hear her really loud. Yeah. And lately, it's been farting dogs. Yeah. Blowing oh us out every, of Every time we bring Apollo in here, he Whew. almost kills her. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Last time we tasted it and everything, it was so oh bad. my god! I think I I was here for one of them. Oh my god! Where you were just like, oh, oh no. man! We're what in... happened on the last one again? Oh my god! It was even worse because I'm in the middle of a sentence and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa! <laughs> it, it was, was awful. Terrible. It was terrible. So bad. I was thinking of putting a picture of him up on our Instagram. Oh, our farty cute. little co-host. Yeah. With he's not poof, so little coming out of his yeah. butt. Poof. <laughs> poof. He hotboxed me in the car the other day. <laughs> oh no! When he... <laughs> I, t- I took a whiskey to go pick oh, up groceries. God, I hilarious. did the online order and was waiting for them to bring him out. <laughs> and no way. <laughs> he started barking really loud and he was like scared somebody walking by. So I rolled up the windows. I was like, okay, it's cool outside. It's not too bad. Just for a few minutes until they get here and then I'll roll down down the windows again <laughs> nope he farted <laughs> <laughs> it will peel peel the paint off the walls Dude. <laughs> it is so bad he scared the living shit out of the poor girl that brought my groceries out i mean nothing <laughs> takes this mascara off but that dog farts and my mascara starts <laughs> melting my face. clean your sinuses yeah <laughs> <laughs> my taste buds have been, right, there. right? <laughs> my t- taste buds are gone did uh did you did i send you that link on that chiropractor who had that yeah trick i told garrett i was like i'm gonna flick you flick you back in the, of the, that in was the back of the head uh, where was i <laughs> where was i i forget yeah. oh i was talking about um thomas his brother charles brother Thomas, I'm I'm trying to. We're talking about his brother coming back from, from yeah. the war. Okay, so then, then he gets out. back and he immediately finds out. Like I didn't put this in on paper, but he immediately finds out about his brother. The whole dismissal and all that stuff happens, and he's very angry. He's angry, like he's just like he wants to get revenge, and like his mom, Maisie, basically like talks him out of it but he was talking about the relationship him and his brother had like they were both good at football in school and like they were really close he said that him and his mom and his brother were like like this tight-knit family Uh so it was like super hard on them so he comes home and he finds out about this and you know they live in this small town and whenever he would see one of them like come on road and one of them would be passing him by he would literally like just have his gun there like ready like wishing that they would just like confront him because he was just so ready for any excuse to blow just, him away yeah and his mom would just talk him out of it every time like she he would she would talk him down mm. like she's one of those women that I've been watching a lot of court cam <laughs> And these people who in in the court forgive the murders of their children. Like, I forgive you for murdering my child. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know that I can. I would never want to find out if I can do that, first of all. Just putting that out there. Just like the Watts family. They did that. They didn't forgive him. Not what? Not the Watts family, but her her parents. Yeah, they, they forget. That they, was his parents. Like, we unconditionally love you. Yeah, but it was them too. Because I was listening to the court case. Oh, really? And know. they did it for their grandkids. Oh. So, I don't know. I don't know. That It takes a very big person to yeah. do that. I don't know. I mean, it, it always makes me cry when they do it. Because they're just so amazing i think you have to they know when when they see that in the person too and it's for themselves right they don't want to carry that anger with them but a lot of times it brings out that humanity in the person who took the life of their loved one and it's just like a, i don't know i can't explain it it's weird but that one where the, that person the police officer had come home from work and she ends up Going into the wrong apartment. And <gasps> what was his name? Botham? Like something. Well, anyways, the brother, when they, they the family got to talk, his little brother ends up like doing this whole spiel of like, can I hug you? Whatever. Mm. Like it was like, he forgave her. So that took everybody like for yeah, a Yeah, because even, I mean, everybody was pissed off about it. Yeah. 
<clears throat> wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So anyways, and there something like that happens in this story too, at the end of everything, at the end of everything. That's why I was saying it was like, it's, this is more about Thomas's journey mm-hmm. from feeling angry and frustrated. And like, you know, he was dealing with PTSD and all those other things from the war over the years and the loss of his brother and the anger because it just went nowhere. The case went nowhere. There was Mm -hmm. no resolution. So he was dealing with all these things over the years and the journey that he makes from beginning to end being this person, angry person. And at the end, he stands in forgiveness of one of them Mm -hmm. that asked for forgiveness. And he said, yes. Wow. So like, if you listen to the whole thing from beginning to end, like if, if you have dry eyes at the end, Mm -hmm. like you have no soul. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Well, it's, that takes a lot for them to even, most of them don't ask for it. They yeah. don't give a shit. Right. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Out of nowhere, he did. You're, you All must right. be up okay. here somewhere. All right. While on this journey, they inadvertently find that ja- find out that James Ford Seal, who they had been told that he was dead, he was alive and well, um, and conspicuous and carefree living here. So why? Are you okay? Oh, I was just yawning. Um, Charles Edwards was also alive and as well and was also serving as a deacon at a church. (laughs) Of course he was. And this is the one who he ends up forgiving in the end. Yeah. Well, good. Good But getting there in those months of them going, him going down there and them trying to have conversations with these guys. A whole nother story. No, it was like, yeah, they dogged them at every, at every chance they got. Mm -hmm. Um, at the pressing of Morin Ridgen's documentary, the state officials reopened their investigation. Morin Ridgen discovered new documents and important witnesses that were willing to testify. Ooh. So in July 25th, 2006, a federal court granted Charles Edwards immunity from prosecution in his testimony. So this is the one that he ends up forgiving at the end. This wine actually is good. It is good. Mm-hmm. It's good. Do we sound drunk? I have to save it for when I'm not busy. <laughs> not busy baby. being the incubator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I'm when I'm creating a human life, I have to try it out. <laughs> well, cheers to your boba. Or you already drank, drank your boba. I sucked on my balls. You sucked oh, all your balls. Gone. Cheers to your balls and your and your little human. The little guy. Aww. Your little nugget. Well. <laughs> Uh, let's see so anyways they discovered new documents and important witnesses so in july 25th 2006 a federal court granted charles edwards immunity from prosecution in his testimony and edwards will say that he aimed a shotgun at the victims while clan members beat them oh yeah and he's the one that gets forgiven that he saw the victim stuffed alive into a trunk and driven away, and that Seal later reported he and others drowned the two men in the bayou of the Mississippi River. What's up with the mic? Do you I hear it? It keeps doing that. Mm-hmm. June 14, 2007, James Seal um, is convicted by a federal jury, one count of conspiracy to kidnap two persons and two counts of kidnapping where the victim was not released unharmed okay none of these are murder and on august 24 2007 james ford seal was sentenced to three life terms at 71 43 years after killing charles moore and henry d damn james ford seal died in prison on august 4th 2011 so he didn't get to serve too much of that sentence he died but, in prison, but, but man, he had a whole life out of the outside. Exactly where he That's was ridiculous. just you living said his life. Years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he got free. Mm-hmm. Thomas More was quoted as saying, "Rejoicing." I guess this was an answer to a question. That's not my nature. All of that is behind me. I lived through the process. I hope he fi- finds peace with his God. I mean, in the end, it's not the physical world that you have to deal with. Right. There's only one you have to answer to true that so and i got my information from wikipedia coldcases.org um a blog called the woodstock whisperer by jim shelley and of course the podcast cbc podcast someone knows something season three. Oh, that was a good one short but sweet okay that was good crazy it was a good podcast though i i've spent the rest of today you have to forward it to me i will did I put you to sleep with my story? No, but now you know what it feels like. <laughs> I'm always yawning on her. She's always like, 
I'm like, okay, and, and then I'll hurry up through my story because I'm like, well, she's bored. They're probably bored too. Well, and, then, and then Shorty's like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's Shorty. <laughs> and then uh, there's so many times I'm like, wait, what was that? What was but... that noise? And it's Shorty. Oh, because you're now looking for EVPs. Does she, does Which, she know? Yeah, well, by the way, on our last one episode, where I was hearing it, yeah. There, on our last episode, there talk. was actually an EVP. So if you guys want to go back and listen. Um, I don't remember exactly what the time was, but I just left it in there. But it sounded like a faint, like a woman, like, ah, like yeah. it was weird. And it wasn't either one of us. It was, yeah. it definitely wasn't us. No, because it was weird because I was, I don't, don't remember exactly what episode it was, but I know there was an episode where I'm listening. Of course, I'm listening in my car. So like all speakers are on. It's loud as hell. Right. My car. And I remember like hearing things that just didn't sound like a dog or it just didn't make sense. And you guys kept talking over it. So you guys didn't acknowledge it. So mm-hmm. I was kind of like, oh, that was weird. And then it was like the next episode you were like, OK, so just so you guys know. Well, I was editing this. There was a lot of strange noises and all this going on. And so you were like, if you want to go back and listen. And I was like, I totally heard all those noises. But I thought I was like hearing stuff from the outside or what. I didn't I didn't know what I was hearing. So so now I'm more aware. I'll be like, what was that? Yeah, we've gotten you know? some crazy wins. We've gotten like mm-hmm. all like just make a quick MP3 and send it to her. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Listen, you need to hear this. So now I'm like really aware of like. <laughs> You're all looking for stuff. I'm on video painting. I know, trust me. (laughs) Like, and I'll go like several episodes and not hear anything. And then all of a sudden, like, bam, like I'll hear one and I'll play it back over and over again. I'm like, what the heck? We don't hear them. Like when we're like, yeah, but every once in a while she'll be like, what was that? What was that? (laughs) Yeah. But now it always cracks me up because ever since like those episodes, now you guys are like, that was me. That was my foot. That was the dog. You guys like tag it. You right. Know. It's a marker so that when I'm listening yeah. to it. Yeah. But yeah. usually I, I can definitely tell what, what the EVP is compared to the like the ambient noise behind us. Like. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll be like. Oh, okay. and Yeah. Yeah. It's cool because it, it's not something you you would be expecting. I would imagine that it's just like, all right, that doesn't make sense. Right. You know, that kind of like stood out, out of place. usually. But we yeah. have had some where, like, it was literally answering. Carlene had said something, and it literally answered Carlene. What? Oh. Some of our EVPs that we've gotten. Oh. Yeah. I brought my speaker. I bring it every time, just in case you want to play with the spirit box thing anytime. <laughs> I love playing with that thing. I love it. Garrett just brought in what we call fart chips. Here, let, me show. let me show her so she understands what I'm talking about when I say fart chips. Fart chips? Oh, oh I love those. Yummy. Because every time awesome. we go on like a trip or go to like a picnic or something, Jordan gets them and then she pops them open and the whole car smells like fart. So <laughs> we call them fart chips. Oh, that's <laughs> that's just... For me, it's beef jerky. When you, you're you traveling and you open a bag oh. of beef jerky, it smells like gas. Yeah. I it literally smells that. like gas. <laughs> Those ones, those it has to be the cheddar ones. Those ones smell like fart to me. Oh my god, I love those things. I love just putting them in sour cream and eating them like that. I'll have you know, I only have to stand one more time, I believe, and I will, for the first time ever, get all my rings on my fitness part of this stupid watch thing here. Is that the Apple Watch? Yeah, that's the first time ever I've made it through all the little workout rings. Oh, this just shows. I did something today. My kids are constantly, it's like, they did their rings. They did, like, what are you two, what are you guys don't doing? So you're trying to keep up with them? Yes. They're like, oh, we <laughs> took the dogs for a walk. That's how we get it. I'm like, bastards. You mean? Yeah, you don't want to know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said this. <laughs> Especially. <laughs> yeah. I'm like. I told Garrett that. <laughs> One time Actually, he had the Fitbit, and I was like, I wonder if it would register. Yeah, <laughs> it would probably. It would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay, I've been waiting. This is my smart look. <laughs> this is my serious. Do face. I look smart? You do. This is also my do therapist I? look. So right before I have my clients, I'm like, <laughs> we're gonna put glasses on today. <laughs> Especially when I when I don't feel like putting makeup on, right? And you guys can't see that. Like my glasses cover it. It's good. I can't see it. I can't. I didn't even know you didn't have makeup on. Uh-uh. Exactly, because the glasses cover it. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
is so silly. You should have seen the. I showed her like a little video clip earlier, and she's like, "Oh my god!" No, I was. I, <laughs> I, I said, "Oh my gosh, I've not. I don't think I've ever seen you without makeup." I looked pale. Oh, I didn't think you looked pale. I look like a Victorian woman on my deathbed. Stop. You've seen... I i don't even care anymore who sees me without makeup. I will wear it proudly. Oh, it's that Spanish, okay? It's Spanish blood. Mm-hmm. There was a time that my mom... Like, You're pale when we like were me. kids, we weren't even allowed to... Uh, she would say, are you going to put on some lipstick? I'm like, I'm going to the mailbox. And she's like, not even some lipstick. Oh, wow. That would make me (laughs) self-conscious. It's like, but I'm just going to the mailbox and then I'm going swimming in our backyard. And yeah. My mom was like that Mm -hmm. because she was like a hairstylist for like 20 some years. Mm -hmm. And so like for me going to the grocery store and I wouldn't put any makeup, you're going to go like that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to see. Like I'm going to the grocery store. I'm not going to a club. Like It wasn't until. Oh, go ahead. She won't go check the mail without putting makeup on. And it's right in front of her house. My mom's still like that. And then after my car accident, I was like, who cares? Like, I get more compliments. Well, back then, I got more compliments when I don't wear makeup. Actually, Isaiah, I didn't have makeup on. And I'm like, I'm sorry that you have to look at this. And he's like, would it be insulting if I said you don't look any different? (laughs) I'm like, actually, no. My son. Thank you very much. (laughs) That is not an insult at all. You little sweetie. He's like you. as opposed to my mom. <laughs> no, I think I think we just put too much on. But women especially will treat you different. If I go to Target to return something, well, I'm using Target as an it could be any place to return something, and I don't have makeup, I will get a hassle. If I look good, they won't give me a hassle. Weird. Pretty woman, their asses. <laughs> <laughs> I wear my glasses and look smart, and then I'll do like one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Who is are that, you? Is that the right change? <laughs> and you are okay. I like those glasses. They are my Nordstrom buy. What? <laughs> I got them at Nordstroms, and they I got I got them, and they are my like the steal of the day. These were twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> on for me because i'm cheap <laughs> no these are cheap i got three of them i got a there's red frame and then the black frame and i i think there might be two two frames like this i don't know did you oh finally God, get glasses alma huh? i said did you finally get glasses glasses <laughs> those are readers aren't they no these are my fucking glasses i need to get I like see real i need to get contacts <laughs> i need to get glasses that you can see far away they're like coke but you know where i got these and freaking algodones in Mexico. Let me see those. Oh my god. Oh, they're light though. I thought they were going to be really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they're, they're so thick. I, sh- she's not joking. Coke bottle. They're thick. They are thick. Oh my god. I'm blind. They're, I think I got motion sickness just putting them on that. I'm long. blind. It runs in the family. We have really bad eyes. I have I mean, really good contacts. Holy cow, mole. Yeah. I'm, and so now you know when I got that scratch, well, I chemically burned off the layer oh, of my yeah. cornea. I was blind. I was fucking blind. No. And I drove. And you drove like a dumbass who could have called me. <laughs> Anywho. Anyhow. Okay. So, mine, let's take a drink first. Cheers. Cheers. We cheers to you, but you're eating chips. <laughs> That smell like farts. <laughs> I'm eating red vines. Oh, no. red vines. <laughs> red vines. Okay. It's on Charlieville Cas- Castle. Charlieville. Charlieville? Yeah. Charlieville. Charlieville. Except for if you're from Ireland, you say it. Ireland, you say it differently. <laughs> Charleville. Charleville. The first, all right, the first mansion to be built on the site of... A chair. She already broke a chair. <laughs> I have pictures and video. Oh! <laughs> oh no! She could have fell through it. Yeah, my I just felt my butt cheek just like slide off the chair. Okay. No, I remember hearing that episode. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh my god, it was hilarious. That was hilarious. Okay, so this is another kind of place that was built in sections but anyway the first mansion part of it was built in 1641 by thomas moore it passed through a lot of hands okay why are you looking at me weird no i'm just (laughs) because you look so smart she's like 
Damn. She looks I it, like I'm afraid those to say videos the wrong thing. where you take it off and then you let your hair down and it's like, "Woo, girl." <laughs> yeah, no, I felt that connection. I saw right? it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. waiting for her to jump up on this desk right now. And, and like start. some Bon Jovi or something right. starts playing. Def Leppard. I'm dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh wait hold on before we do anything else I wanted to play this squirrel wait I was standing on the corner selling rap CDs when I met a little girl named Jen I let her ride in my caddy cause I didn't know her daddy was the leader of the two plus plus plan. Plan. <laughs> we oh, oh my gosh I love this group I love it <laughs> Every time you say Ku Klux Klan, I think of that song. You're thinking that. I am. I'm like. Because I didn't hear, know her daddy was leader of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should I start over? I mean, I just started. And go. Okay. She's like, so we're going to cut all this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can. Sidebar yeah. on the sidebar on the sidebar. On the sidebar, sidebar. sidebar, sidebar. <laughs> I mean, I'll start over just in case you want. Okay, so the first part of the mansion was built on the side of Char- Charleville. What part of Ireland was it? Oh, um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say here. But yeah, for some reason it didn't even say here. I'm sure it's... Anyway, the first part of the mansion was built on the site of Charleville Castle was by Thomas More. That sounds, that makes sense. In 1641. I mean, that's not really the main part that we need to know okay. for a reason. But, I mean, that's not like the main source of the story anyway. The state passed through the hands of a bunch of people. Charles Moore, Lord Tullamore, grandson of Thomas. You're looking it up? Yeah, but I got one in India. No. In Shimla. Yeah, no. Yeah, there is one, but that's not it. Okay. Grandson of... Wait a minute. I'm trying to think of where they said it was. No, they never said it where it was. Just in Ireland. Anyway. Oh, okay. What? Is it a castle? Where are you on Wikipedia? Because that's where I got this and never said that I know of. This says, no, I accidentally clicked on TripAdvisors. Oh, okay. It's like things to do in Tullamore. Yeah. So Lord Tullamore. So I'm going to assume that's where it, in Ireland. I didn't know Tullamore was a place though. That sounds like it. I've never heard of Tullamore. Neither have I. Neither have I. I love how we figure shit out as right, we're as on. we're going mm-hmm. as we're researching your story. <laughs> but that could be why they didn't. I don't know why they. Because usually they'll say like the whole history of it. Located in County Offaly, huh. in the Midlands of Ireland. Like it, Ireland, like I said. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It's in Ireland. It's in Ireland. Ireland. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the state passed through the hands of Charles Moore, Lord Tullamore, grandson of Thomas. And when he died in 1674, it went via his sister Jane to Charles William Burry. But one of these women, I thought it was her because it went to her. Charles, I thought, took her name Mm -hmm. and then obviously got her property. Anyway, Charles William later became Earl of Charleville, uh, the new Earl. Because he actually became like, what did they call him? He became a second Earl and a third Earl. I don't know. But anyway, I just, I'm going to call him the Earl. The new Earl decided to build a house. It doesn't really matter to my story because we got to get to the hauntings. Yes. (laughs) To the hauntings, please. The new Earl decided to build a house on the estate commissioned in 1798. It was designed by Francis Johnston. He is a big character in the story. So yes, pay attention to him. Francis Johnston. Mm -hmm. It's seared in my memory. Oh, burpy. And was built in 1800 to 1812 area. I guess they don't really know. 1800, 1812. Yeah. Actually, I think it took that long. Oh, okay. Probably. Because the castle was not continuously occupied due to the castle owner's lack of resources. Each reopening of the house resulted in the addition of new rooms refurbishment. (laughs) Sound it out. Look, she went to sleep. Hooked on fire. I think we killed her. She died. She went to sleep. I killed her with boredom. (laughs) 
<laughs> this includes engaging William Morris, who designed the ceiling within the dining room. That's going to mean something in a minute. Um, the castle played host to Lord Byron. We all know who that is, right? But no. Who held many parties here? Oh, burpee. The house once boasted a painting from 1789 called Henry VIII Act Five, scene four by Matthew William Peters. That's a big deal, I guess. Anyway, which having been removed from the house in 1970, is now in a Canadian ca- collection. Lord Byron's a poet. Oh. And politician. Oh. Lovely. The castle remained <laughs> uninhabited from 1912 when Colonel Howard Burray left. By 1968, the roof. The roof. The, the roof, roof was on fire. Had been removed. Oh. Yeah. It wasn't there. <laughs> no. <laughs> work on there the was rest- no roof to burn. No. no. Okay. The uh, work on its restoration was commenced in 1973. A charitable trust has been formed to help with the restoration to this day. Okay. Present. Present day. Currently, the Charleville, Char- Charlieville, Charleville. <laughs> She really, she really passed out. No, she took a little break. <laughs> no, she's asleep. No, she's not. <laughs> she's like, Carlene, your boy. <sighs> Good night. Yeah, I'm she's done. like, I'm full off of red vines and chips. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Currently, the Charleville Castle Heritage Trust is managed by Dudley Stewart. I don't know why you need to know his name. It's not like you're going to write him a letter, are you? Right, I, maybe. Okay, well, his name's Dudley Stewart at the Char- Charleville Castle Heritage Trust Company. Okay, I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> I'm writing you a letter, Charlie. <laughs> Anyway, oh, wait. Dudley. 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 Okay, so volunteers handle stuff there. And I got kind of confused because when I was watching stuff and they were interviewing people, they would say, when we moved in, and so I was like, so they, they're the owners? So I may say owners, but I think they're volunteers that live there. Okay. And like their whole family moves in. So like custodians or something like that? Yeah. Something like that. I don't know what I'm saying. All right. So events are held at the castle because, you know, they want to keep it up and they're trying to like refurbish parts of it. So they do things like Fright Nights and they haven't. Yeah, that That sounds like fun. Listen, my dream, I want to live in a castle. Me too. Let's do it. Let's do it. Why can't both of us do it? Let's do it. Why can't we share a castle? We can share a castle. I mean. We can get a castle. You can have your wing and I can have mine. I'm all down for it. Yeah. But it has to be in Scotland. <laughs> oh, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> I mean, I'm okay with that. I like Ireland. I like Wales. Scotland? I don't know why I want to live in Scotland. Have you been watching? I love everything Scotland. Okay. You need to watch the show. I watch it like almost every day. And they do, they sell properties like out in the country in Wales and England and like all the, like the outskirts. And oh my God, I feel like I belong there. Out in the country? No, in Wales, Ireland, any of those places. Somewhere where it rains every day. Ugh, but I can't do the <laughs> rain. But God, they're just so beautiful there. And I think I'm supposed to live in a castle. Okay, let's do it. With the big fireplaces that like warm up your room. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> so to keep it up and running, they hold um, the, a, an auction and a play by the English Chamber Theater called, I like this, Dearest Nancy Darling Evelyn. I'm going to look up that play. Dearest Nancy Darling Evelyn? Mm-hmm. I'm going to look it up. Dearest Nancy. I'll look it up right now. Okay. The Moore Festival and its successor. I don't know what that means. Oh, that's somebody else that they... Okay. And then Castle Palooza is another like thing that they do. Ooh. And Face Fest. I thought at first that was a typo, but no, that's a thing. Face Fest? Mm-hmm. And um, a non-for-profit festival held in the summer solstice. Solstice. So... <laughs> I've had too much wine already. I already have to pee again. Anyway, the castle is uh, also now has the global expedition expedition base of the Explorers Museum in honor of Charles Howard Burry. Yes, I have to do this. She's like, I have to do this. 
Have you ever seen me do this? You, you need to like make that the bigger. type bigger. I know. You well, I to... thought it was. Oh, it's bigger down here. Okay. All right. Anyway. Currently, That's why I do 20 point. I do have it like that here. I don't know why it's smaller here. That's where it, here. Wow. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the castle itself is believed to be the most haunted building and grounds in Europe, with it appearing on shows. Oh, I'm already going to say this: most haunted and scariest places on earth. Mm. The most. Well, that's from. Wait, wait, wait. The most famous of these ghosts is that of the third Earl of Charlesville's younger daughter, Harriet. She lost her life after falling from the main staircase Ooh. of the building at the age of eight. Ugh, so, of course. No. she was sent to the nursery to go, like, wash up, I guess. And when she was coming down, she was like, you know, little kids, they like to slide down the banisters. But these, this staircase, oh my God, the staircase is so brilliant. And it's like many floors up. Oh, I think there's like five floors or four floors. And I don't know where hers was, but it was it was high enough. And she slid down and she fell down the wrong side of it, evidently, oh. and landed on the cement and like on her head. Oh. Anyway, she died. How old was she? Eight. That's eight. Terrible. Eight years old. Uh, and that was in April of 1861. Oh, yeah. She's haunting the place. Oh, she is. Is she? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I guys. feel like the 18... We've said this before. The 1800s <laughs> have the best ghosts. So does, like, Ireland, England, all those places. We've, we said that last time, I think, that mm-hmm. all those places are, like, super thick. They're much thickly. older than we are, too. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the castle has been visited by... Why is this not supposed to be here right now, I don't think? Anyway, I'm not going to even read that right now. I'm not even going to acknowledge you right now. <laughs> I'm going to scroll. <laughs> Actually, I'll go ahead and say it, but if I repeat it again, whatever. Okay, so Ghost Hunters International has been there. It's been used as a filming location for Becoming Jane in 2007 and Northanger Abbey, I don't know what that is, in 2007. The castle has also been used alongside of Ashford Castle in Mayo, Ireland as a set for the French court in the pilot episode of Rain, which I love. Have you watched that? Uh, I I watched a few episodes. Okay, it took me a few episodes to get into it. Okay. And now I'm super addicted. Really? Yes. I'm I'll just now, because I even, I watched a few episodes and then I just stopped and then I got back into it. What Do are you, watch you it? doing over there? She's like, <laughs> I'm just My watching puppy got, She like woke up and so she's, okay. So you guys can have an idea. <laughs> this is my pregnancy pillow. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. she keeps popping up underneath the pregnancy pillow and popping the screen up because she woke up and now she's all like hyped out of control. Oh my god! And so that's the situation. Right so, now. <laughs> all I see is like it looks like you're just bopping all yeah, over the, the, the place. The thing is just like you're like boop 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 boop. Yeah, she keeps oh going god. underneath it and keeps like flipping the the blank the pillow up. But <laughs> what? That's the castle. Game? Oh yeah! Isn't that cool? Can you see it? So yeah. pretty. Isn't that cool? anyways i just wanted to share it's so pretty even inside it's really pretty it's freaky but it's pretty yeah okay all right <clears throat> so this is where the fairies come in i'm just get I, like the history of it it's more interesting to get into the, like the crazy shit and i'll still tell history stuff but let's just get no, into let's it. get into the crazy yeah. shit. I'm, okay. I'm all down for the crazy shit so in ireland ireland they I'm have, not- you know, they have a lot of like tales, a lot of folk, folk tales, like, folklore, right? Fairy tales. Yeah. Okay. So since the ancient times, the people of Ireland believed in fairies. Right. Okay. But these are not, these are not your cute little sweet fairies. These mystical beings are magical, okay. powerful, and evil. And when they show pictures of them, they were like showing, they look like, um, they look like the seven drawers, <laughs> but evil, like with warts and they were wearing like, they look like elves of some sort. Like happy and grumpy and... But yeah, they look like elves. You know them all because you're yeah. all into the Disney thing. What's, grumpy, what's their names? Happy. I mean, I'm only into like Snow White just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a yeah. little. Oh. I don't know. 
<laughs> my, that's how my daughter in law is. But anyway, they have like their their hoods on and their like very big noses and warts and big ears. So they don't look like fairies to me. They look like elves. Very evil. Oh, what are those gnomes? Like gnomes. Yes, that's gnomes. Just, it's gnomes. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. a movie that Guillermo uh, del Toro did. <clears throat> it was, I think, it was in Ireland. Mm -hmm. But the depiction of the fairies was pretty scary. Yeah, they to were them, scary to them. I guess fairies are scary. Fairies are, you talking are scary. About Pan's Labyrinth. No, it was a different one. Uh, oh, okay. Hold on, let me. That was a good one. That was good, but that was Spain. Okay, so I'll keep going. The fairies inhabit... Okay, so we got to picture this. The fairies inhabit an invisible world around us. The fairies had these paths. So this castle is kind of on a hill, a hill, a hill, a hill side. A hill? A hill. A And, uh... And I guess there's these paths that go along. If you block a path... Okay, hold on. Let me read this. The fairies had these paths that went from fort to fort. And they say that... Not fart to fart. Fort to fort. Fort to fort. <laughs> and fort they fort. say... Fort to fort. <laughs> and they say these paths... That would be Swedish. Fort to fort. <laughs> yeah, fort to fort. <laughs> <laughs> These paths must run free without any obstacles. If you block a path, you will have trouble in that spot. You could never build your house in the middle of one of these paths without creating trouble for yourself, such as poltergeist, bad luck, illness, or whatever horrible thing you can think of. Yikes. The, this castle was not just built on a fairy path. But where two fairy paths intersect, so you know you can't you can't block a fairy path, a fairy path, a fairy path, <laughs> a fairy path, fairy paper, fairy path, <laughs> and they he's there's a, a and a, yeah they're blocking two of <laughs> he's blocking two of them, so anyway he thought he could steal the fairy's power, huh. yeah, almost a, uh, everyone who enters the castle mentions feeling an extreme energy force, and that's true. True. Every single YouTube I watched, they would be like, they'd get to a certain point and they'd be like, do you feel that? On most of them, it was when they'd get to the chapel and they'd be like, they'd start walking and they'd be like, whoa, whoa, it's like there's an energy force. It's like a literal force that's like pushing. They're like walking through an energy really? force. Yeah, it was crazy. Do anyway, they have any psychics? I like it when they do no. the psychics. They, yeah, hold on. Okay. I got you. I got you covered. Okay. I got you. Okay. okay. Char, uh, Char, Phil <laughs> is built on an ancient burial site okay. where many say spirits still exist. They believe that this accounts for the strong force of energy that is felt in certain parts of the castle. The first owners, okay, I put owners because I thought they were owners, but I actually think they're a watch. What do you call it? People that watch over it, move in, right. residents. Anyway, they're residents. They, they're they volunteers that are watching. I can't think of it. I know what you're talking about. Anyway, the, the first owners of the, the castle tried to harness. Oh, no, no, no. This is actual. Forget it. Sorry. The first owners of the castle tried to harness this powerful energy. And it is said they performed black magic and performed ceremonies that were so extreme that it consisted of cutting off people's hands and Ew. lips. I may mention that again, so just bear with me. Okay. Um, while watching an episode of Most Haunted, they had filmed production. Okay, so they had their production staff before they had even gotten started, all of whom had experienced they all experienced something strange. All like so. Uh, one woman preparing food. <laughs> so she's on the staff and she's preparing food. Was explaining how okay she had this black trash bag that was like on a like some kind of a ladder, or some kind of hanging. It was just hanging there, and she's like, yeah, I, it just started swinging. She's like, I thought there was a cat or something that had like pushed it, and then I noticed nothing was there it just was dramatically swinging back and forth Ew. yeah and then the hostess her name's Yvette Fielding, Fielding and the makeup artist both explain how that when they went to the bathroom the lights suddenly went off nope. <laughs> so they're they're in pitch black I don't like that mm-mm mm-mm -mm. And especially then, if you're like that's, you're vulnerable yeah Put your pants down right 
Well, uh, the makeup artist was washing the, like, the brushes and stuff, and then the other one's doing her business, and the lights just go off, and it's pitch black in there. So, yeah, that's a little freaky. Yeah. And then... Um, that movie that I was telling you about is called Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Did you watch that one? Mm-mm. No. I seen that. Watch it. Don't be afraid watch of the dark. I, I was looking it up, too, and I looked to see where I could find it. I have to rent it on Amazon. <laughs> Um, okay, so the ba- that bathroom lights suddenly go off, and then after about a minute, they go back on. Mm-mm. Right after that, they interview another cast member. I think he was actually one of the producers. I can't remember. But anyway, he explains how he was in the bathroom kind of around that same time. And as he walked in the bathroom, a different bathroom, okay. <laughs> as he walked in the bathroom. Um, I was going to say. Yeah. The door dramatically like slammed shut. Oh. Yeah, like behind him. He goes in and then it was like, bam, the door shut. Alrighty then. Yeah, creepy. Later, while waiting for the medium to show up, the producer of the series experienced a door he was next to. So they show him. He's like, yeah, come here. This door right here. I'm standing here. And this door right here was open, closed, open, closed, like four or five times on its own. Yeah. How heavy is the door? They're they're huge wooden oh. castle doors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're not, they're not like just flim, like flimsy doors. Okay. So the owner of the house who i call the owner of the house but it's a volunteer probably that it's a resident a resident of the house that takes care of it was telling a story of how when when they first moved into the castle the, okay so their little boy they had a little boy i'm guessing he was probably around three four five mm-hmm. something like that i don't know but anyway he he had disappeared for like an hour they couldn't find him and they are freaking out because be. well they're thinking like of the eight-year-old girl that fell oh. off the banister like they're freaking out and it's not safe like it's you know huge stairs and it's just not it's not safe for a little kid to be wandering around and um they finally find him he's sitting at the bottom of the stairs and he says don't worry mommy a little girl and a little boy held my hand oh (laughs) nope (laughs) nope Yeah. And uh, and uh and then well, I she's, guess that's comforting. I mean it is. Wait till you hear what she says. She said um they would often hear voices outside their bedrooms and would he and could hear a child crying in some of the bedrooms. The woman telling the story said it was actually her mom so her mom was staying there once and she's one of the people that actually saw one of like she actually saw a ghost okay and like she a full body apparition uh-huh. okay. and she thought it was her husband <gasps> getting up wow <laughs> and she looks over and realizes he's in the bed neck sleeping next to her so she's like what the hell is that and and she said um it was uh on winter solstice and she woke up thinking she saw her husband walking across the room in a red robe only to realize he was sleeping beside her oh wow she said the man in the big red great coat was as clear as any real flesh-bodied human and the little girl there was a little girl had blue ribbons in her hair with that description they figured the little girl to be that of the little girl who fell harriet harriet is Harry? the name of the little girl that fell oh, okay oh um, harriet yeah then that's as such she, an old school name harriet <laughs> right have you met a Harriet recently in your life? No. Then um, as she was reading a book, so they were reading uh, the the resident person was read. They were going through a book and they saw this bust of um, a man and it, it, it was a bust of <laughs> it was a bust of Francis Johnston, the architect oh. of the house. And her mom was like, that is the man I saw. That's him right there. And so she, she saw the apparition of him. The woman recounting this story, the owner, whatever I call her, the owner, explains how these are not scary spirits, but seem to be friendly. She goes as far as to say she would miss them if they were gone. I know how that feels. <laughs> I totally would be like, mm, I miss my ghost. I miss my spirits. She just let me listen to something. <laughs> 
<laughs> from my video. From her video, because she's got like this video camera in her house. And in the middle mm-hmm. of the night, like it just goes off and you can hear. It's it like full like conversation. conversations in my living room of. Oh it's just God. her and the cat. And we're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's a man's mm-hmm. voice. And then like. And a there's, woman's mm-hmm. voice. Yeah. Like there's voices that aren't mine. But it, it's unintelligible. Yeah, you can't. But it's obviously like, it's like somebody having a conversation in another room. Yeah. Where you it's can, yeah. definitely it's like in that area. I mean, you could tell it's like, it's not a TV. It's not. It, yeah. It, it was. Yeah. It's crazy. It's cool. Yeah, it's crazy. It gave me goosebumps. Everything gives me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this as, wine gives me goosebumps mm, oh i it's should so take good. a sip and drink because i'll have to pee again mm-hmm. and you're the one that's pregnant mm-hmm. you've gone once i've gone once <laughs> i know i go like 10 times during this whole thing <laughs> okay so as well as the residents volunteers who reside there uh when they give tours many have reported hearing the giggling of the little girl, <clears throat> as well as cries and screams. Yeah. Some have caught video and photos of orbs, mists, and shadows. They believe to have been um, even caught photos of the little girl. That's what they say. But I didn't see them. I saw like orbs and mists and stuff, but I didn't see, I didn't see anything that would have been, oh, gosh, I'm dramatic. <laughs> Anyway, (laughs) Um, okay, as well as EVPs of the little girl and the vast amount of spirit who reside with her. So there's like also um, a lot of military men and stuff in there, in that whole... Ghosties? Oh, yeah. Like, I have more history to tell you, too. Uh Anyway, I am pretty sure it's on here. I'd be really sad if I missed it. You didn't... You forgot to copy and paste it? No, I was actually doing it as... I even reread it to check my work, so... All right. Oh, yeah. Here I am. Okay. Okay. So one night, the husband... Okay, so the husband of the woman that I've been talking about... God, my hands are everywhere. (laughs) She's okay. very handsy. Now you can see what yeah. she's doing in yeah. the background. Yeah. Okay. So animated. Very animated sometimes. All right. One one night the husband heard screams and cries coming from the dungeon. There's a dungeon and there's tunnels that run Ooh, through there. Tunnels? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on to your britches. We got more to go. Isn't this a good one? Yeah, it's a good one. Okay. With only... He, he only had matches. I don't know why he didn't have a candle or a flashlight. He only had matches. He that match. doesn't make, yeah. <laughs> doesn't even make sense to me, but that's what they said. With only matches to light his steps inside. Oh, God, that sounds so. So he hears screams coming from the tunnels. He goes down there, and as he's lighting matches and goes into Who the tunnels, this? the husband of the oh. lady that I was telling you, the, the screams stop. Okay, all he has is matches. <laughs> yeah. And he, he's going down a tunnel yeah. to find the, the origin the screams. of these screams. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. With only matches. I don't know. But now we're back to Derek the medium has shown up. Okay. Okay. And as soon as he gets there, because now we're back to the show. (laughs) I mean, we've been on it the whole time. These people were like telling their stories. So now Derek the medium has shown up and immediately he starts getting things. He's very dramatic. (laughs) But anyway, he is immediately directed to the dungeon area, which is the tunnels. The dungeon area, and I'll probably repeat this, but it was also, it was a, there's jails down there. They used it as a jail. Yeah. Like, like prisoners from like the town were brought to that Mm. jail. So I think that's where the military thing comes in because it was during like that time. Right. Anyway, the, the British would bring, that's a ghost. That's not me. You hear him? Right. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Before I mess up my story, because I pushed something. Don't give Carlene wine. Why do you make me go last? <laughs> Your story is all because straight and narrow. And then by the time my story comes, I'm like all nice and buzzed well, that's and what messing makes up. That's fun, because yeah. I do the serious, yeah. bloody, murderous story, and then you get to lighten the mood. <laughs> With- Stumbling over my story. <laughs> Okay, Derek is there, the medium. Okay, he's directed to the dungeon immediately. Okay, so while he is explaining what he is 
feeling, because he's feeling a lot. Um, <laughs> you can see this small orb go by Yvette. Remember Yvette? She's the hostess. Uh-huh. And it goes, you can see it. They don't acknowledge it on the show, but I could see it go like right in front of her. Ooh. Mm-hmm. It was cool. Anyway, he doesn't even say anything about it. So I guess that makes me better. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Um, <laughs> Here, have some more. Yeah. No, I got enough. 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 Wait, we finished it. Did we? I wonder if we're giggly. Mm. 15%. <sighs> okay. So then in these tunnels, they go into this one area. It looks like a little cave. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. It could just be part of the tunnels. But to me, it looks like a little cave. It's very dark. The, all the tunnels are dark. But this, anyway, he's like, okay, let's go in. Let's go in here. And she's like, are you sure? Is it okay? He's like, yeah. And as he's going in, he's talking to his spirit. And he's like, you will not do that. No, you won't. No, you are not allowed to do that. And then, yeah, yeah. It's a little dramatic. It's so dramatic. (laughs) Oh, I wish I would have taken a clip so we could hear it. So he goes in and then um, she's going in with him. And all of a sudden they're like, "Ah!" they're screaming and running out. And he, and she's like, what was that? What was that? And he's like, I, I, and he's even a little thrown off. And he's, he's starting to describe that it felt like he got hit with a stick by something. Ooh, yeah. That's not nice. They didn't no, like him? Didn't like him. It was a very negative force. Uh, yeah. Yuck. Yeah. Yeah. He was trying to set boundaries and this negative force was like, I'll set your boundaries, motherfucker. I'm going to spank your ass with, this. with a stick. <laughs> I'm gonna whoop you like not my grandma used to say go get a switch I'm gonna whoop you <laughs> I, my grandma didn't have a switch she would chase us around with her shoe too I, I don't know why we were always scared of my grandma but she never ever laid a hand on me oh ever. my grandma didn't touch us but we we would I run we would her. laugh well we weren't afraid we would laugh at she her she was but... an intimidating woman she I mean was I wasn't raised around her but she had a vibe that oh, was yeah. scary we had really? stories we had stories that we would share among like your sister told me she was a witch oh my god I was just gonna say that <laughs> Oh my god, that well, is someone insane. told me that our the uh, you guys, I not, was just the gonna say was a witch when I was a kid. I yeah. was just gonna jokingly say that, yeah, maybe she was. It was just a story <laughs> to scare us. Her, her sister <laughs> liked to make up stories, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to Derek, okay? Okay, okay. Derek, come on, Derek, okay, so. I'm going to mention this one thing about Derek because Ghost Hunters International went into that same area and they also had negative, creepy feeling in that same exact spot. Interesting. They went, I don't even think they went in it. I think they were like, no, motherfuckers. So what do you think it is? Like an elemental energy? Like a... I think, well, wait, because when we get down more, girl, she's got (laughs) hiccups. Hiccups? Hiccups. I already have to pee again. Girl, what is going on with your bladder today? This is more than usual. This is way more. I never, I don't, I've only done this like once or twice where I've actually had to interrupt my own story to go pee. <laughs> Usually I can push through it. No, it, this is like you broke the You know seal. it's bad when she's in the middle of a good story yes, and she still has to go. Because I don't even want to stop. This is so good. All right, let's just keep going. On the series, Scariest Places on Earth. Stop it. Oh my God, I'm just going to go. You know that play, that, you know that series? <laughs> Scary, I mean, ignore her. Don't give her attention. <laughs> you know that series, Scariest Places? Oh, yeah. Okay. That was one of my favorites back in the day. Okay. Well, with this castle, they had families that would, they would like do challenges and have the families go in. Mm-hmm. And so a family from Boston and this family is hilarious. They're like, yeah, we can do it. Sure. You know, whatever. They have to Boston. spend a whole night. Yeah. Yes. But is this the one scariest stories where they would like at the beginning they would do something like do like a seance or they would do no. a, a Ouija board thing like they would try no. to summon? No, they did not do that. Okay. They didn't have to in this place. Okay. So do you have to go pee? No, I just need <laughs> stretchy pants. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, um, okay, so this family. Oh, I'm getting bored from my own story. See? Oh, Carly gave you bored. some coffee. Okay, I drank coffee before I kicked that top. Oh, I rubbed off. Okay, so you you guys, I yawned the other day. My cat was laying on top of me and I yawned and then I made my cat yawn. I've never seen the <laughs> contagious yawn happen to an animal. Have you? I did that to my dog the other day. I thought it was the weirdest thing. Because I yawned and then so she cute. yawned and I was like. It was the cutest thing. Who was that? That was so cute. Did I do that? My neck is starting to hurt. Did I do that? Did I do that? Okay, so these people, they're called the Yuricks. That's their name. That's their last name. There's a family of five, I think. Um, They go into the house for an overnight challenge. And after experiencing many terrifying bangs, giggles, furniture moving, pictures flying off the walls. Oh, that's a lot. That's extra. I'm telling you, they got a lot. And Are you sure they didn't do something to open stuff up? No, they went in. They do. They do. At the beginning, they do a protection prayer. And then they're like, and you, they all got a room that they all had to go to. By and themselves? Yes. Ugh. And the, the son was in the dungeon. Yes. And he kind of got lost. And they had to, they all had to go and find him. Oh. Yeah. It was sad because. How old was he? I mean, he's a, he's a, an Older. adult. Okay. Yeah. But it was still sad that they had to go find him. And I don't feel so bad. <laughs> it was scary. It was At scary. first I was like, oh. No, and I think down in there is where furniture, like a chair was moving. And he's like, uh, I don't really like what's happening down here, you guys. <laughs> Things are moving on their own. And then when they were upstairs, they had one sister that was like panicking, freaking out. And um, when they walked by this one area of the picture, I mean, it basically flies off the wall. Mm. It's, it, and they, they show it on there. It's crazy. Crazy. Are you about to yawn? Yes. I yes. saw you. Yes. I saw you. Okay, she like so swallowed like... that yawn. She was like, mm. Yeah, you gotta do this. <laughs> I've been doing it when you guys aren't looking. And then I you just look happened to go out. Like, yeah. <laughs> you gotta do one of these. Like, mm. very polite yawn. <laughs> anyway um they didn't make it through the whole challenge they bowed out they were like get us the fuck out of here we're leaving sounds like the smart thing to do i mean your camera got really bright did it can you see it it does it got, look, like really washed we look really washed out, out. Mm-hmm. it's because of the lighting oh there it goes oh <gasps> do you see how light it was yes and now it went dim oh that's weird mm-hmm. that light didn't that hasn't changed Mm-mm. i'm sitting here almost and you guys looked really ghostly you know it's like whoa i say after this <laughs> we pull out the ghost box thing she just can't wait to pull out that box i love it <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious well i have my meter and we bought it and we haven't even been able to use it let's and pull it out home. girl pull it out <laughs> i always the only thing is that whenever we do something like this mm-hmm. then she has to do like her little thing clear it she out. always clear she's like oh that was a that, that, yeah i didn't like and that and i was like well, i'm glad you did that because <laughs> we're oh, at my house speaking <laughs> of <laughs> meters speaking of meter oh no that's the next one okay uh, don't okay. let me forget okay. about meters because i didn't write that one down okay okay the resident who was interviewed in the other show before you know when i was talking about earlier she's interviewed for this also for this um challenge scariest what is it called scariest places on earth uh-huh and what um, happened to that show? I used to love that show. I know they should bring it back. Now would they be the should. time to bring it back. Oh my gosh! Bring it back. Um. Anyway, uh, she shared more experiences, stating that every time she would mention the little girl, any time she would mention the little girl, the tower doors would slam shut. Ooh. So she was like, maybe that's where the nursery re- was. I'm like, you're a volunteer here, wouldn't you know? Everybody else seems to know where the nursery was. (laughs) Oh, boy. Okay. She said the dungeon in the tunnels. Okay, so she said the dungeon in the tunnels was used as a jail and that rumors were said that some of the more rebellious prisoners were tortured and that she and others would hear the disembodied screams of spirit who would reside in the tunnels or may still be imprisoned in the jails. 
as spirit energies. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. Like maybe they're trapped there because they're naughty. It also was rumored that Francis Johnston was a Freemason. And for those who don't know what a Freemason is, uh, an ancient society built on secrets. They had a Freemason on there and he said, or it's secrets based on a society. (laughs) What? That's so profound. No, it really was. <laughs> but it, the um, it's a total boys club, but very prominent, very prominent far. people. Far is the word. Very prominent people have been known to be Freemasons, like presidents and very high up. Political. By the way, I just turned on the ghost app. You can't really hear it, but it just gives a word Yeah, at and a time. So far. We've had so far. opening and far. Opening was when I was talking about the door far and away far far and away my friend (laughs) (laughs) choking what i got chills with that one that's crazy okay anyway another one's coming all right all right all right (gasps) rub oh you could rub me on that (laughs) somebody wants a massage (laughs) rub those sweaty balls okay (laughs) They want you. Oh, well. Well. I'm are waiting. you going to rub my shorty bowls? That's, what, well. the, that's, what, ghost, that's what the ghost well. is saying. Well. He's like, please rub my shorty balls. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to say something else. If it says shorty balls, I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> chain. chain. Oh, whips and chains? <laughs> oh. Feisty. This right. uh, do, 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 do. Freemason. The residents state in their interviews with scariest places. Shown. Huh? Shown. Oh, shown. Shown what? That they believe rituals by the Freemasons happened all over the castle. And there was even a hidden door. This is so cool. The, in the library, there's a hidden door that goes, that leads to the chapel. Really? Remember what I said happened in the chapel? Oh, there's like that force of energy. So they think that in the chapel could be where the architect Francis Johnston might have taken rituals too far. Okay. Yeah. Some of those tortured or during some of the rituals, it said, okay, okay. They were tortured. Some lost hands, fingers, limbs. Yeah. I mean, (gasps) what? Tell me that doesn't match with what we're saying. Took it too far. Because look, they it's performed scary. they performed black magic. Look at what happened. Mm-hmm. They performed black <laughs> used. used. They performed black magic and other dark demonic ceremonies. Okay, that's creepy. I'm getting creeped out. <laughs> and they would punish those who told secrets of their Freemasons or broke any of the rules. It's believed that Johnston's experiments and the powers of darkness might have contaminated my bones. Oh my God. This is so happy. Whoa. This is so crazy. We don't usually get stuff like this. No, it's never says things like this. (laughs) Never. All right. Every single thing that's come up is match this. It's yeah. match this. Yeah. My bones. My bones. My bones. Exorcism. Okay. All right. Chains. Um, oh, yeah. Because they were chained. They were prisoners. Oh. And they were being mistreated. All right. I'm getting cre- the creeps. All right. Okay, the darkness contaminated. It, it's believed that the, that Johnston's experiments with the powers of darkness might have contaminated. Did you hear that, Mike? <laughs> might have contaminated or cursed the castle forever. Okay, the series did another challenge at the castle, this time with a family from California. The Beans the family. The Beans? Or the Benes. Okay, the Beans. I think it's the, I can't remember, B-E-N-E-S. Benes? It could go either way for me. I thought it was the the beans. beans. I thought that's how they said it. I like the beans. Yeah. Anyway, now with a new resident staying in the castle, as well as the original woman mentioned before, she explains how she witnessed furniture moving. And then this new resident who stays there, her mother, while she was sleeping, she awoke to spirit energies around her bed. Mm -hmm. And like they were performing a ceremony around her bed. Okay. And, oh, hell no. Yeah. And they were little hooded. What? Uh, 
those ugly fairy things. Shut I think. the fuck up. And and then one was the guy in the red coat. And as they as she, well, she woke up, she watched them, and they were they ascended up into the ceiling. And so late, um, yeah, and the, until they disappeared. Later, she saw a photo in a book of the architect Francis Johnston, and said that was him. That was the guy. That was like the leader the guy of the in guy. The red. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yep. The castle has also been featured on Ghost Hunters International. Numerous paranormal investigators, psychics have also paid the castle and its ghostly residents many visits. <laughs> oh my God. It was also used. Why didn't I finish this? Okay. Can I just, I'm, I don't know Go where the rest start. of my story Do is. Do your thing. All right. I don't know what happened to the rest of my story because this family spirit made it disappear. I guess this family actually finished the challenge. Okay. And they were going in places and they were, they were like, I feel weird. Like uh, people will get nauseous. They'll feel dizzy or disoriented. They were hearing, um, hearing a lot. They almost bowed out, but then they were like, no, we need to tough it out. We need to go for it. So they went, the whole night and they toughed it out and they they furniture moving oh my god they got um uh you could hear uh sounds like screaming and stuff um oh gosh what else happened with these guys i can't believe my i don't know why there was a time where i was going through it and i'm like i wrote a bunch of stuff down and it would disappear so i rewrote it and now it's gone that's weird i know and I even saved it. So I don't know where it is. I'm just going to wing it. But we got the just See, look how short it is. And there was way more on there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, don't forget the meter stuff. Huh? The meter. Don't forget the meter stuff. The meter? You were saying don't the meter. Yeah. Weren't you saying something about a meter? <gasps> the meter. Said, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Yes, because it was that family. Thank you. Okay. So that family, the family before had the same tools, but they didn't really, I don't think they know how to use them or they just did it. This family, thank you. The meter, um, right away they started using um the e- EMF meter and the, just whatever tools they had. Right away, it the, it started showing like huge electric magnetic field stuff going on. Like it was going, yeah, it was going from zero to like a hundred. I'll say, you know, like oh, it was wow. going off the charts, and they're like, oh my god, it's going crazy, and then the temperature drop. We'd go, at one point, they were like, it dropped like a big amount of degrees. Like, they were like freezing. And even the people before, they were like, we shouldn't be able to see our breath. The the temperature it is right now, we should not be able to see our breath. And you could see their breath. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And so, in different places that they would go, and then um, the the Beans or Bennis family or whatever. The Beans. (laughs) The Beans. The California family. They they actually were the coolest family. They... and they actually, the love that they had, I think, did pull them through for each other and the support. Like, she kept saying her one daughter wanted to bail. And she's like, if I hold your hand, like, as a mom, I will protect you. And I'm like, oh, my God, my kids would totally trust me. Right. They know I will protect them with everything. Right. And they would be like, okay, I'll go. And that's what her kids did. They knew. And so um, they, that's how they finished it, was knowing that they were going to protect each other and be okay and the, how much they loved each other and and just the crazy things like the temperature drop oh and they would feel something touch them it, it was insane like this castle is probably one of the most insane ones that i've done don't I you think go and find it and watch it over because i know i've watched yeah. i watched probably every single one of those episodes mm-hmm. they're good yeah i mean and this castle especially and i i don't know i i think this was a good one because it's pretty that active. sounds like it had a lot of activity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's mostly that even down because they, they don't know. They're like, it, it's built on ancient ground. Right. So they don't know. Is it because like, did they, did they do something to those spirits that made them not be able to roam free? Or is it the fairies and that they trap the, you know, that they intersect, uh, made an obstacle right. on their paths? Is it, who knows? Yeah, so, what does that even mean? I said, answer her. I'm asking all these questions. <laughs> I'm telling you, we did some freaky stuff. Yeah, but it never says stuff like yeah, that. It all says of these pretty, have been... Uh-uh. It's 
freaky shit. That's a lot of freaky shit. That's a good story. That's why I was like, I mean, the fact that it, some of the podcasts that I listened to, they were going, I was like bored with all the, they were talking about the transfer of this and it went, it went from the Moors to this person, to that person, to this person. I'm like, I don't care. Just get to it. Right. (laughs) Get to the action. And then once they got to like, I mean, this stuff is crazy. Yeah. That's it. That's my story. Done. Done. Answer her. Answer her. Tell us something else. Tell us something else. Answer who? Say her name. Say my name. Say my name. Oh my God, I'd laugh if they said Alma right now. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> say Alma. Because I'll freaking throw this through the Do fucking it. window right now. Say it. <laughs> say it. Don't. <laughs> Ooh, that was creepy. <laughs> It, it's it's no it's not starting no it's pretty uh tame right mm-hmm. now oh, anyways oh oh, oh 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 here we go here we go here we go here we go yeah yeah i have to pee so let's get it going mistress mistress, mistress of the dark i'm not a mistress of anybody are you are you i wish my life was that exciting <laughs> and she has her thing on mute because oh, we can't hear her are you on mute no <laughs> Oh, oh no! Yeah, How are you here. so quiet? Oh. Oh. Hi, Garrett. Oh, there's Garrett. Oh, I see. Maybe you have the mistress. Oh, <laughs> the mistress. Yeah, but I can't tell you about her. If she's not my mistress anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Now we know. The now truth. we know. Now we the know mirror. the truth. <laughs> All right. Well. That was pretty fucking interesting, and this made it more interesting. Yeah. What do you say? My story wasn't interesting enough. No, that? it was very interesting. I said pretty fucking interesting. That's like up. At I'm the top. telling you, when I was doing well, we this, we had a yawn fest in between it, in between. and then we woke back up. Yeah. I was like, when I was doing this one, I'm like, I think this is one of my best ones. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's a good one. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there, damn it. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Well, I think that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of fucking freaking me out. Wait, wait, um, wait. <laughs> wait. This is what. Wait. <laughs> and Garrett playing the part of Thing on the Adams family. Wait, look. Almost. Don't do that one. I don't know what don't that do that one. I had her so freaked out last time. Don't do that one. Don't do that one. Don't do that one. I was like, just stop. Just stop. I'm going to have nightmares. That's the scariest part. I, I agree. I agree, Garrett. I'm gonna have nightmares of that shit. Where'd you hurt? And that was so hard to do watching you laugh. Watching you laugh. I'm getting sweaty. I had to concentrate so hard just now. Don't you need the bathroom? <laughs> she probably already peed her though. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> stop. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of, like, Boppo. Like, wasn't there, like, some kind of, like, scary movie where, like, Boppo was, like, yeah. laughing and kept, like, Peter tottering? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god my back hurts so bad from doing that oh. that was hilarious it's oh so gosh. funny freaking her out it's i'm already sticking. freaked out from this it won't stop from doing that it's all just mistress it's stayed up mistress this whole time <sighs> it's garrett what did i do garrett. Do garrett's the mistress name? let's see what it says when i walk out if it talks behind my back well that's our show if you're watching us on youtube or listening <laughs> to us ready? on youtube <laughs> Okay, what's it gonna say? It's get- oh, oh, oh. Right. it's getting ready. Say it. Disregard. Please oh, disregard. Disregard the mistri- mistress comment. I was just. <laughs> they said, never mind. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> when you go to say goodnight to your daughter tonight, I want you to go, I love you so much. <laughs> yeah, then she'll really sleep well. 
<laughs> she'll end up in between the two of you. Yeah, she'll be right in between. Oh it wants to tell us something else. It wants to say something else to you. Not to me. To you. To you. To, to you. you. Here it goes. To you. One, two, three, four, five words. Yeah, it, oh, nail. You nailed it. <laughs> What? I'm going to get nail to na- sacrifice. All right, we're done. Nail common. sacrifice common. A nail sacri- something good. Sacrificing you common. My name's not common. <laughs> 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 all right anyways okay that's that's gonna be a wrap guys thank you guys for listening that's a wrap um if you're listening on youtube please hit subscribe <laughs> we'll let you see this video <laughs> yeah we might we might i don't know <laughs> anyways i'm alma i'm carlene i'm bianca go ahead what oh me yeah get rid <laughs> Get rid. <laughs> oh, I like that. He joined us a little late. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for joining uh, us. Mm-hmm. Good night. Good night.